Welcome back. I'm Jackie Ma. The Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry says it will airily spray Auckland again, if it has to. Just as it did to eradicate the last invasion of an exotic pest, the painted apple moth. But how safe is this spray to humans? Math says there's no problem, but a Wellington scientist warns we should be concerned. Man-made rain. Math poisoning the painted apple moth. It's 4A48B, a biological pesticide. Each drop a living bug, lethal to the exotic moth pest. For two years it was dumped on West Aucklanders, Matt insisting it was safe. But is it? The bastards will not spray again without me in front of the plane. They won't. It's potentially um, serious enough, in my view, that spraying should stop. It's a rare thing, a government scientist sticking his neck out. But Dr. Simon Hales doesn't buy math safety assurances. This expert, this epidemiologist, with an international career and reputation, is now prepared to risk all that for his conscience. The government has tried to cover up a legitimate scientific concern. They then attacked the people that, that had written it. Dr. Hales and his team of scientists from the Wellington School of Medicine was commissioned by the government to assess potential health impacts of aerial spray. But when he wrote a report claiming he'd made some disturbing discoveries, Dr. Hales claims the government chose to largely ignore him. So I mean, you don't think they picked the wrong man? I mean, you're, you've got, you're, you're an environmentalist, aren't you? Yes, I am. Um, well, I imagine they probably think they picked the wrong man. Um, it's probably what the community would prefer, to have mm. someone who's um, going to take their side, not the government's side. Worse than that, Dr. Hales found himself under attack by a security minister, Jim Sutton. He seems to have made a giant leap into the unknown there, and uh, he might have said, well, there might be flying saucers, so we shouldn't go outside until we prove there's not. What's troubling Dr. Hales is this, the tiniest droplets in the 4A48B spray, bioaerosols, brimming with live bacteria and a drift on the wind. So small, he says, that you inhale them deep into your lungs, triggering a response that could ultimately cause fatal respiratory disease. Are we talking about birth defects here? Are we talking about cancer? Respiratory cancer is, um, is a possible yeah, lung cancer. Christchurch smog gave him the clue. This is the environmental scientist's specialty. The effect of tiny carbon particles or smog on the respiratory system. That expertise led Dr. Hales to make a disturbing discovery in the skies above West Auckland. A link he says no one has made before. Painted Apple Moth Inquiry Line, good morning. In 2002, the planes went up and the complaints came in. Yeah, and then the kids are complaining about stingy eyes, and I had really bad eyes too. Dr. Hales says he made this discovery. Those sore eyes and the sore throats, locked noses and dry coughs West Aucklanders complained about exactly matched the symptoms for something more sinister. Bioaerosol exposure. Those tiniest windborne droplets in the spray, small enough to become lodged deep in the lungs. It's not normal to be inhaling um, a fine spray of bacteria. I mean, it's not, it's not a, a natural exposure. The body is designed to respond to bacteria appearing in unexpected places, such as deep inside your lungs. And when that happens, Dr. Hales claims the live bacteria can trigger lung inflammation. And with enough exposure, the long-term result can be chronic respiratory disease. 
maybe even lung cancer. Now, if Dr. Hales is correct, this raises some questions. How much of the spray breaks down into bioaerosols? How far do those fine particles drift? How many people were exposed and to what extent? This is new science and math admits it doesn't have all the answers. These particles can drift for hours or days. So, I mean, it's not, it's not outrageous to suggest that the majority of the Auckland population could be exposed. And we wouldn't know about it unless we look. And so far the government's not showing any sign of being interested in looking. But MAF's boss, Biosecurity Minister Jim Sutton, insists the spray is safe. I, I just don't think uh, that he has presented a sufficient case to rule out the best, most effective weapon available to us to protect our people, our environment and our livelihoods. The gold standard for getting uh, advice on public health in New Zealand is the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Health has not been able to find any evidence that would recommend that we stop spraying and I would be uh, reckless to disregard that advice and I haven't disregarded it, I take it extremely seriously. When the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry's latest aerial eradication program took off, it was one of the biggest of its kind anywhere in the world. For two years, MAF bombarded West Auckland with 4A48B. The target this tiny Australian caterpillar that poses an enormous economic threat to our trees, the painted apple moth. Math won this battle, but not the war. This year, more exotic moth pests have turned up, like the fall wedworm. Most likely solo stowaways and not new populations, but MAF is on standby to send up the spray planes again. Don't have to scrape me off a tarmac. I'm dead serious. Viv Shapcott is defiant. She's also dying of motor neurone disease. A mystery killer, no certain cause, and no scientific or medical evidence to link it to 4A48B. But the West Aucklander is convinced her exposure to the spray contributed. Maybe they can't prove that my illness is caused by the spray, but they certainly can't prove that it's not. And the thought that this illness that is such an incredibly horrible, debilitating illness could perhaps affect other people. Absolutely gives me the horrors, quite frankly. I would be horrified to think that they could do it again. Like others who were sprayed, Viv suffered severe bouts of diarrhoea. Some would say you've been visited with a terrible disease and now you're trying to find something to blame it on. I don't believe that anyone could have diarrhoea as constantly as I had diarrhoea without it having some effect on the, on the, the sensitisation process which then makes you susceptible to other things. <laughs> Gentlemen. The ingredients of 4A48B are a commercial secret. However, Sunday was given this document. We were told it's off a tank of the pesticide stored in a South Auckland warehouse. These are the American manufacturer's guidelines for workers handling the pesticide. Some of the language used in the document is alarming. 
manufacturer advises extreme caution and calling a poison center if there's contact with eyes or skin. Despite that, there is a raft of medical and scientific evidence backing the safety of the spray and no evidence linking motor neurone disease to the bug buster 4A48B. I'm sure they will say that. Um, they said that about Agent Orange. They said it about asbestos. They've had to eat their words. And I suspect that in probably 20 years' time, they might have to eat their words yet again. The community have, have been, essentially, have been experimented with. They're guinea pigs. They're guinea pigs in as much as we don't have an adequate assurance of safety for the, for the spray. What I find most astonishing is, is the extremely poor quality of the evidence um, in relation to this spray. There have been a handful of studies, each of which has serious flaws. Admittedly, no, that there is no positive evidence that the spray is causing long-term harm. But really, nobody's looked. Dr. Hales claims studies done so far are flawed, too small and too short-term. And that, he says, is irresponsible. That's just the worst time of my life. And that was for over two years. Andrew Harvey had to give up his job and go on a sickness benefit during the spray program. I mean, basically I was going, night after night, I was going to the clinic, um, the clinic in Henderson at two o'clock in the morning, but it cost nearly $100 each time. MAF advised Andrew to leave the area every time the planes went up. But when he came home, he claims his symptoms returned. MAF now questions whether symptoms like Andrew's were real or imagined. MAF's latest health research reaffirms the aerial spraying is safe and responsible. And then it says concern about exposure to chemicals like the spray may result in vague sensations being unconsciously magnified and misinterpreted, which raises an obvious question. Are you saying it's psychosomatic? It's all in their heads? Well, you're saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm taking the expert advice I receive. As of now, uh, the best expert advice available in the world uh, to MAF and to me is that BTK spray does not cause any significant sickness, but that people who have a perception of risk uh, can have their health uh, directly affected by this uh, perception. So we take moves uh, to control that perception by moving those people out of range of the spray. So it's only their perception that they are ill from the spray. Can affect their health. If that's not psychosomatic, what is? Well, I mean, you can call it what you like. Real or imagined, only a handful, about 2% of West Aucklanders, asked for medical help. And MAF's latest research says fine spray drift was minimal unlikely to be environmentally or medically significant. There are other studies looking at air quality and hospital admissions, but Dr. Hale says none of this addresses the long-term threat of bioaerosols. Okay. The Ministry of there. Health now accepts Dr. Hale's found a gap in that research and that there is a theoretical risk from bioaerosols. But they say the other studies underway at Dr. Hale's recommendation should be enough to identify any long-term hazard. There are no plans to stop aerial spray. MAF now has blanket approval to spray Greater Auckland. I wouldn't accuse Dr. Hale of scaremongering, but this whole area is an area where there is a lot of scaremongering. A lot of people uh, proclaim that there are uh, uh, hazards to people's health without producing any evidence that there is. Well, yeah, OK, I am pushing a barrow. The barrow is that the public health should come first and economic uh, considerations should come second and that there shouldn't be a, a trade-off between those two things.
that's not the end of it. There are two independent investigations into aerial spraying. One by the Ombudsman, due out soon, the other by West Aucklanders themselves, who plan a people's inquiry in November.